Hi everybody, it's Mr. Yosef, and today we're going to be graphing this on Miskit. Um, this is an interesting graph because of this R squared. So we're going to have great conversations about this. So the first thing you'll notice is if it's R squared equals 25 sine of 2 theta, we could technically isolate R, and we could do that by taking the square root of both sides. When you take the square root of both sides, you got to remember to put a plus or a minus. So this ends up being r equals plus or minus square root of 25 sine of 2 theta. So the square root of 25 is 5, so you can actually take that out. So you end up with plus or minus 5 square root of sine of 2 theta. So the really cool and interesting aspect of this type of graph is the plus or minus part because that means for each uh, angle you're actually going to get multiple angles multiple answers sorry but let's try zero oops zero so if we do zero it's r equals plus or minus five square root of sine of two times zero which is r equals plus or minus five sine of zero degrees if you think about your unit circle at zero degrees, it's one comma zero, and your y value is zero, so that means that sine of zero is zero. So r ends up being plus or minus five times zero, which is just zero. So the exact value is zero, which is nice. So let's try pi over six. So I'm gonna erase all of this, and then this time I'm gonna write pi over six. There's several ways to do this. Like you can do a lot of this using a calculator, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do it the longer way just to show you that you can calculate some of these values. So sine of two times pi over six, two times pi over six. When you multiply fractions, you multiply across. So you end up getting pi over three. So this is pi over three. And now r equals plus or minus the square root of, well, let's think about this. So if we're doing sine of 60 degrees, that's 60 degrees, opposite of 60 degrees is square root of three over two, and then the cosine is a half. So sine of pi over three is gonna end up being the square root of three over two. So again, my answer, kind of weird you're doing like the square root of square root of 3 over 2 so I'm going to calculate that real quick square root of 3 over 2 and I got to bring down my 5 too sorry and I'm going to get 0 0.93 but I'm going to multiply that by 5 and I'm going to get r equals plus or minus 4.65 so if I was going to write an exact answer, once again, the exact answer is plus or minus 5 square root of square root of 3 over 2, or 4.65. There's really not anything appealing about this form right here. It's kind of messy. Um, but we're going to get plus or minus 4.65, and we'll discuss what that looks like. And so let's keep going. So I'm gonna do this for a couple of them and then we'll kind of fill out the rest based on some patterns. So if we did pi over four, so sine of two times pi over four, that is sine of pi over two, which equals one. So we got r equals plus or minus five times the square root of one, which is just plus or minus five. So that's why this one is actually exact, and you get plus or minus five. Now let's do it for pi over three. So if I do pi over three, this ends up being sine of two pi over three. So two pi over three is 120 degrees. It still has a reference angle of 60. So sine of 120 should be the same thing as sine of 60, except sometimes the sine change. But the sign here doesn't change because of the y values in the second quadrant still being um, positive. So
So when I do this, I should actually get the same answer as I got before, the square root of three over two. So that's why you're gonna get plus or minus five square root of three over two, which is plus or minus 4.65, okay? And just to talk about that one more time, like two times pi over three, that's two pi over three, has a reference angle of 60, so we should expect that to be the same. So now let's move on to pi over two. So if we do pi over two, that's gonna be sine of pi, and sine of pi is zero, so that you should expect this to be zero because plus or minus five times square root of zero is just zero. So if I was gonna plot these points at zero, it's zero. At pi over six, we got 4.65 over here. And I'm gonna highlight this like this, just to show you, because it's plus or minus. So if it's minus, we're gonna take this point and also flip it. So that's what? One, one two, three, four, 4.65. So I just wanna show you that because it's plus or minus, it's a, so it's plus or minus 4.65. It's like pi over six, comma 4.65, and pi over six, negative 4.65. The negative part just means that I would go to 30 degrees and then flip that 180 over. So that's why we have these two points right here. And now let's do pi over four, which is plus or minus five. So that should just be right here and that should be right here. And then at 60 degrees is the same point as we had earlier, right here. And then at pi over two, it's zero again. So looking at this shape, it's kind of interesting. It looks like, you know, it goes like this. So I think the hard thing about this problem is the fact that the order in which you do the points are not as obvious because if I was gonna do this again, I could have done this just to show you. I could have gone like this and then I could have gone like that. And then when we went to five, I could have gone up that way and then go up here. And you could have just gone in order but both points eventually lead back to zero. And so that is a shape that we get just by doing the first couple angles in the first quadrant. So let's see what happens when we try two pi over three. So you gotta really pay attention to what's gonna happen because we cannot forget the fact that our answers are inside a square root first. So you'll see what I mean. So if I'm doing this, I got r equals plus or minus five, sine of two times two pi over three, which is plus or minus five, square root of sine four pi over three. So you gotta think about a unit circle and think about four pi over three. Four pi over three is in the third quadrant. And if we're in the third quadrant, that means our y value will be negative. So we're thinking about a unit circle, which I'll draw real quick. 4 pi over 3 is somewhere like right over here. Our y and x values are both negatives. I don't even care about the answer. I'm just thinking about the negative for a moment. So if my y value is negative, then whatever answer I get in the square root, it's going to be plus or minus 5, the square root of a negative number. And the square root of a negative number is imaginary. So in this case, it's going to be undefined. It's not just going to work here. So that's why we're actually going to have nothing for two pi over three, because we're gonna end up getting a negative number inside. And so the cool thing about this is if you repeat this process for three pi over four and five pi over six, if you multiply each of those degrees by two, which I'll show you. So if we do three pi over four times two, that's six pi over two me, sorry, six pi over four, which is three pi over two. 
sine of 3 pi over 2 equals negative 1. So you're still getting a negative 1 inside the square roots, so that's why that one doesn't work. And the same thing is going to happen with 5 pi over 6. So interesting that whenever we pick something in the second quadrant and we doubled it, all of those angles ended up being in a quadrant where your y values were negative, thus you can't do it. But when we go back to pi, I believe pi is going to work. Because if you do sine of pi, that's 0. So let's do that. So it's r equals plus or minus 5, square root of sine of 2 pi, plus or minus 5 times 0, which is 0. So at pi, we're at 0 again. So for time's sake, I would challenge all of you to do these three. But when you do these three, you're actually going to end up with the same answer. They're actually going to repeat. And you're going to get a zero. And all of these are not going to work as well. So let's see what this graph looks like. So 7 pi over 6 is where? 7 pi over 6 is right over here. So if I'm at 7 pi over 6 and I'm at 4.65, do you see that I'm right here and I'm right here? So the shape actually just repeats itself again. And so that's why it's not even necessary to continue because it's just going to keep overlapping on top of each other. So this is your final answer. So I hope that helps. And if there's still questions, please let us know and we will get back to you. Uh, thank you. And I hope this helps.